He's still in there with something. It's all right, Ginger. Ginger, would you please get Natalie some water or maybe something stronger? Look, just water. It's Cliff. We have a code red. Cliff, what's up? Hi, friends. After some movie, we're going to check on a movie that has just been released. Let's go to today's idioms, such as put the words out, big deal, and nine others. So let's start. Poker face is about a woman who can tell by looking at people whether they're telling the truth or lying. That is, if they lie, she will quickly notice it and accidentally gets involved in stories and solve many murder cases. Let's go to the first episode and the beginning of the series, which starts with the hotel sequence. And the housekeeper says, Housekeeping? Housekeeping is an activity of taking care of a house, especially by cleaning it. Here, that woman wants to clean the room and says, Housekeeping, when you go to the hotel, you will always hear the word that they came to clean your room. Let's start with a funny example of Family Guy, where Peter thinks about what job is suitable for him and... Hotel maid wanted. All right, sweet, I can do that. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping? Not now. Housekeeping? Go away. I come in anyway? No, go away. I come in anyway. Oh my god! I said no! Okay, I clean? No, get out of here! I clean now? No! I stay and watch? No! I get involved? What? I get involved with lady? What do you think? Turn around. I don't think so. Okay. You lend me money? No. You drive my grandmother to a doctor's appointment? No, no, I'm not doing that. I stick finger in your mouth? Housekeeping? Okay. Okay. In the second example, the Hotel Transylvania, Frankenstein is kidding with Murray inside the hotel. And now saved Rick's reaction. Hey, guys, watch this. <laughs> By the way, you were right about those directions. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I took the tigers through the Nile and there was absolutely no traffic. You're kidding me, right? In my lobby? Zach, I swear, man. I, I don't want like that. <laughs> Housekeeping! I was not the cause of that. <laughs> Before the next part of the tutorial, if we have been able to teach you at least one new word or one new idiom, please like it. When the housekeeper went to the room, noticed something and immediately went to the boss. And he said, what's up? Hi, Cliff. He's still in there with it's something. It's all right, Ginger. Ginger, would you please get Natalie some water or maybe something stronger? Uh, just water. It's Cliff. We have a code red. Cliff, what's up? What's up is used as a friendly greeting and to ask someone how they are doing or what's happening. What's up, bro? How are you doing? It depends on the situation. Well, there are some simple examples. For example, in succession, where Roman wants Greg, his cousin, to bring something from home, Greg asks him, what happened? What's the matter? What's up? Long legs, Greg. Hey, uh, I need a favor from you. Um, What's up? Uh, Dad had some papers he wanted us to sign, and they're in some envelopes just Pick him up at the house. And... Or Seinfeld. Kramer has just been broken up and he isn't happy as usual. And Jerry noticed something is wrong with him and said, what's up? <laughs> Hello. 
Hi, 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 hi. What's up? Well, uh, you're right. About what? Alan, we, uh, broke up again. Oh, <laughs> too bad. I thought she was the one. <laughs> The housekeeper is talking about the subject, the owner of the room, and says, I know it's a... No, I, I believe. I believe you. It's just... Uh, Mr. Kane's suite. You 100% certain? Room 1848. I know who Mr. Kane is. I know this is a big deal. Natalie, it doesn't matter who he is. Big deal is used when you don't think something is important or even special. In fact, shows that you're not impressed with something that they consider it's important or impressive. Well, let's go to Friends, where Bruce Willis, who is the father of Ross's girlfriend, and Rachel likes him a lot. They start making out and here Ross comes in. Joey? Hi, Ross. I was just getting him to like you. Joey? Joey? Hey, Ross. Ross, Joey is not here. Okay, I'll just wait for him in here. Ross, it's okay. You can come out. Yeah, Ross, it's okay. It's me, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> oh, I didn't... Oh, my gosh, I didn't even see you. <laughs> sure you did. You came in, you got all awkward, and you ran to the bedroom, and you were shouting, Joey, Joey! <laughs> Hi, Ross. Hi. I'm going to call you later. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Ross. <laughs> what? What? What the... How did... How did... What the... How did... What? <laughs> You know, he lost his keys, so he was looking for them. In your mouth? <laughs> no. Downstairs, and we got to talking, you know, for like two hours, and I really liked him, so I invited him up here for a cup of coffee. You were at the coffee house. <laughs> Ross, what's the big deal? So I kissed the guy. He is my girlfriend's father, okay? It's, it's, it's weird. What? That would be a wonderful animation where Judy is explaining to an elephant that what you are doing is bad for health. Actually, I'm an officer. Just had a quick question. Are your customers aware they're getting snot and mucus with their cookies and cream? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I don't want to cause you any trouble, but I believe scooping ice cream with an ungloved trunk is a class three health code violation. <laughs> which is kind of a big deal. Of course, I could let you off with a warning if you were to glove those trunks and I don't know. The boss wants to make the housekeeper careless and solve the problem himself and says, don't worry, we will support you. Now we're going to do what we need to do, OK? Uh, I have to. I left my cart in the hallway. Leave it. Don't worry about it. I'll have to at least check out. Don't who's... clock out. We'll handle all of it, all right? You've been through enough tonight. We're gonna have to contact the uh, FBI, I think. Probably have to give a statement. I don't know how it works. It's just... But we'll be there for you. Being there for someone means always be ready to listen to someone's problem and to help to support them. Click on the subscribe button and that is important for us. And don't forget that we have listened every week. I'm sure if you're a fan of Friends, you must heard I'll be there for you at the first of the series. So we check another example. The missions versus the machines. A person is talking about his new invention and when he shows his previous invention, the machine says... <laughs> At Pal Labs, we're all about connecting you to the people you love. Whether it's in your home, your car, hello, Mark, or your pocket. That's why we created Pal, the world's first smart personal assistant. We wanted her to be a new member of your family. A smarter one. <laughs> I'll always be there for you, Mark. 
Thanks, pal. Aww. Well, the boss is nervous because of what happened and says, Should we call your father? No, we're not calling my father. I'm handling this. I can handle it. Then tell me what to do. Handel has different meanings, depending on the context it's been used. Here means to manage a situation or problem. In fact, to appraise or control something that could be difficult or dangerous. Let's go again to friends. Ross wants to play rugby for his girlfriend, Emily, which is a rough game, and Joey tells him you cannot do that. And Ross says, Man, look at this. Ross, I can't believe you said you'd play rugby. I mean, look how brutal this is. Hey, I can handle it, all right? Please, Ross, you, you got hurt playing badminton with my dad. <laughs> Before the next example, Joey said brutal. If you don't know the meaning of brutal, check this link. Here, Chandler made a mess and told someone to propose Phoebe. And Monica wants to fix the situation. Monica, can I talk to you for a oh, second? Okay. <laughs> David's gonna propose to Phoebe tonight. See what happens when you give people advice. <laughs> I hope you told him not to. That would be advice. <laughs> be fine. I'll handle this. Where Australian goes to the main character of the series, the one who noticed all the lies, Charlie, and then start talking about the memorized in past and what the father or the owner of the hotel and the casino did to Charlie. First, Charlie says, You haven't gambled since. You really haven't. Well, your dad put the word out that I played dirty. You said it yourself. Gamblers talk. To this day, no podunk penny game in this country will take my buy-in. I'm blackballed. Your father made a rumor about me that my game is not right. She means playing poker. Put the word out means to let people know the police put or got the word out that they were looking for him. In the blacklist, Lee's, one of the FBI agents, is accused of murder and some criminal things. And everyone is looking for her to arrest her. Here, Donald, one of her colleagues, says, put the word out. He actually asks everyone to infer. The owner's gone. The lawyer's gone. The wooden lizard gone. Why would he go to all this trouble, risk everything, just to free Marvin Gerard? Put the word out. They're in the wind and we're back to square one. And here, Better call Saul, Jimmy asks two criminals to make a scene, a criminal scene, to be stolen and spread and tell everyone so that other think they're innocent and even victims themselves. They stole a million dollars plus, right? You, you want to get away with all that yummy cash? What do you do? Run? No, you can't. If you run, everyone knows you're guilty. Ah, but if you're kidnapped, you're a victim, right? They staged this to throw everyone off. You guys are looking in the wrong place. Who knows how many miles into Mexico or Canada they could be? You, you gotta put the word out. Now we talked about the rumor, Charlie said. Your dad put the word out that I play dirty. Play dirty is acting in an unfair and dishonest way actually to behave dishonestly, especially by cheating in a game. Let's go Seinfeld one more time. George has a problem at work and asks Kramer, his friend, to do something stupid in his work. To take some kind of revenge, he knows that's not fair and right, and he tells it sarcastically. Would a uh, giant rubber ball work? Conceivably. <laughs> well, Play Now has all kinds of different rubber balls. Why don't we test your bladder system 
at my office. You're not. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Shula likes to play dirty. Well, there's nothing dirtier than a giant ball of oil. <laughs> and now, the third series, where John Luther, the main character, talks to his new colleague, Catherine. Catherine asks him, what is the next step? And because they're looking for a professional criminal, he said, play dirty. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, I'm fine. You're not fine, nobody is. No, I'm fine. Well, good, he's not going home, is he? I mean, not now. It's not gonna stop, not after this, not until we stop him. So what next? Don't play dirty. Now, Charlie says to the boss that your father's job made the gangsters start to... Your dad put the word out that I played dirty. Uh, you said it yourself. Gamblers talk. To this day... The word talk has different meanings, depending on the context it being used. Talk in this scene means to spread a rumor. For example, it's the same in Sinner series, when the detective is in a small town to solve the case. And one of the victim's family says that it's a small town, and people always talk about you. I don't blame you for not trusting me. I haven't been completely honest with you about Sean and Percy's time off island. You have to understand that this is a very small town. People talk. They smile at you. But they don't wish you the best. Escape led to a Mirage series. Two friends are talking about the prisoner. Dennis, for Christ's sake, I'm not going to say I heard it from you, whatever it is. Some guy at the shop. You know how rumors are up there. I'm sure it's nothing. It's just because the guy's such a weasel that makes people talk, you know. Uh -huh. Now Sterling tells Charlie that you're not nervous about this events. You forgot it. You've got this gift. And my dad made sure you'd never use it again. Aren't you pissed? Well, Sterling, no, I'm not pissed. And to hear you tell the story, I was a Cincinnati kid. Pissed off, it means very annoyed or angry. Avatar movie, when Jake Sally enters Pandora and visits the animal there, the boss tells him to not make them angry. You'll piss him off. It's already pissed off. Jake, that armor's too thin. We made a tutorial with Avatar The Way of Water. Which link of that is here. Well, let's go back to the tear. I must add that you can remove off. It's not necessary to come with off as poker face. And here, die hard. The tourist is nervous because of John McClane and John's wife, who the tourists don't know that she is his wife, says that only John can make everyone angry. God, that man looks really pissed. He's still alive. Only John can drive somebody that crazy. Well, Charlie replied that she's not angry. And after that, she tells Charlie, dude. And to hear you tell the story, I was a Cincinnati kid, methodically fleecing my way across the country until my master plan was thwarted. Dude, I was a dumbass. I, I... Dude is a slang greeting between men, meaning guy or man. In Lost series, Hugo's famous phrase is dude. Let's see some example together. Uh, dude? 
dude. Dude. Charlie also said, I'm not angry because I was stupid that time. Dude, I was a dumbass. I, I, uh, I had no grand plan, no map with yarn or anything. The meaning of the last is a foolish or a stupid person. Idiot. Let's take the first example from the second part of the poker face. Is that a squirrel? Not nah, some kind of dog. No, not a squirrel, not a dog. Uh, which is the one that eats wood? Dumbass, none of them eat wood. Ah, uh, guinea pig, guinea pig. Oh. capybara. The last example of this widow is the Sharp Objects mini series, for which we also made a tutorial. The link is here. Camille is talking to a friend in a bar. He says to Camille, you used to be smart. And she replies, but you were stupid. I wouldn't try to eat that one down there alive. Always recurring. Oh, still a smart ass. Still a dumbass. Dumbass with the hottest karaoke club in seven counties. If you're satisfied with this training, tell us in comments. So that we can come back with more training with other episodes of The Poker Face. Until the next video.